Shane here with the University of Ultrasonics. This will be the second video in my Digital Revolution video series, and this time we're going to dive a little bit deeper into sampling theorem. Um, if you missed the first video, which was intro to digitization, uh, go back and watch that first. And then when you're all caught up, come back here and let's level up those UT skills. Harry Nyquist is known as the father of sampling theorem. He was a pioneer of data transmission advancements across telegraph and early telephone systems. Um, he performed theoretical work on determining the frequency bandwidth requirements for signal detection and information transmission across electrical lines. Um, he determined that the sampling frequency of an electronic system should be greater than or equal to twice the highest frequency signal present in order for that signal to be accurately detected and represented. Um, this is known as Nyquist theorem or Nyquist-Shannon theorem. And his work is still used today, nearly 100 years later, uh, for converting analog signal to digital. So let's talk about some common applications of Nyquist theorem. Um, he did his work with telephone systems. Human speech has a frequency range of about 200 to 9,000 hertz. Uh, the goal in telephone lines is to make sure that both a person with a high frequency voice and a low frequency voice could be both heard and recognized to a listener on the other end of the phone line. The upper and lower frequencies of that human voice range proved to be difficult to transmit over electrical lines. So uh, 300 to 3400 hertz was chosen as the frequency range that was going to be transmitted. Um, the highest frequency necessary to detect was 3400 hertz. According to Nyquist theorem, the telephone frequency information had to be sampled at 8,000 hertz, which was a rate just greater than twice the highest frequency of interest that we wanted to reproduce. We can also draw some similar parallels in the world of digital music. Uh, the human ear can hear sounds in the range of about 20 to 20,000 hertz. Uh, making 20,000 hertz the highest frequency that we would want to reproduce in digital music. Um, according to Nyquist's theorem, the analog audio must be sampled at a rate of just greater than twice the highest frequency that was desired to be reproduced. 44,100 hertz is the standard sampling rate for a CD or for digital music, um, also known as 16-bit PCM audio, and it's just greater than twice that 20,000 hertz threshold. How can we translate that to UT testing? Uh, that's the big question here. So we've all seen an image like this before. Uh, you know, we like to talk about dolphins and bats. Um, anything greater than 20,000 Hertz is considered to be ultrasonic or just outside of the human hearing range. Standard UT testing is about 0.2 to 25 megahertz. Remember the triangle from the first video of the series and let's consider a scenario. We're gonna use a five megahertz transducer frequency. Nyquist theorem states that our digitization frequency needs to be at least twice the frequency of our signal, so let's use 10 megahertz for that. 10 megahertz divided by 5 megahertz is going to tell us that we have two samples per period in that scenario. And we can refer to this as the Nyquist sampling limit, aka absolute minimum sampling. Two samples per period. So let's see what happens when we put the Nyquist limit in action. Uh, we're going to consider a waveform uh, that is sampled at the Nyquist limit, which is going to give us two samples per period. Um, best case scenario, we get a sample directly on the positive displacement and directly on the peak of the negative displacement. Uh, this is going to give us a digital waveform that is both accurate to the timing of the peaks and the amplitude of the peaks. Amplitude fidelity and timing fidelity in this case would both be well preserved. Uh, the importance of timing fidelity is to ensure that the frequency content is preserved, which for UT testing leads to better time of flight measurements of our signals. And obviously amplitude fidelity is crucial for our flaw amplitude sizing assessments that we would do for certain code scenarios. Uh, there's an inherent problem with sampling at the Nyquist limit. Um, where a flaw shows up in a part and where our signal shows up in our A-scan it's random. It is impossible to predict. 
There's no guarantee that uh, using a sampling rate that only gives us two samples per period is uh, gonna guarantee that we get a, a sample directly on the positive peak and the negative peak. Um, you know, those samples could show up anywhere in the waveform. Uh, so it's possible, uh, really it's probable, that the amplitude and timing fidelities may not be well preserved, uh, meaning that the digital waveform will not be a good representation of the original analog, as shown in the blue line there on the bottom of the screen. And then even worse, um, it is completely possible that the sample could occur at the beginning of the period and right there at the middle of the period or the middle of the cycle. Um, the timing fidelity to the peaks and the amplitude fidelity of the peaks would be completely lost. Uh, and we could get a waveform that's basically a flat line right across the cycle. Um, we're going to get a full loss of signal detection. And uh, we're going to have to do better than Nyquist. Uh, so we're going to talk about how later on. And we have one more issue that we need to address. Uh, there's a problem uh, called aliasing. So what happens here? The wave is digitized at a rate that is less than the Nyquist limit, meaning we have fewer than two samples per period. Um, the original frequency content of that analog wave, uh, we're not going to be able to detect and measure that because we're, we're under sampling here. Um, the frequency of that waveform is going to be mistakenly represented as, as being a lower frequency than the frequency of the original analog. And obviously this is going to yield bad results, so we don't want to do that either. So, you know, we've talked about uh, that we need greater than or equal to two samples per period, but we're going to put an emphasis on the greater than part. If you remember from the, the telephone slides, uh, the telephone lines were designed to carry frequencies up to about 3,400 hertz. We used 8,000 hertz uh, for our sampling frequency. 8,000 hertz divided by 3,400 hertz is going to tell us that we had about 2.3 samples per period. So according to Nyquist, any sampling uh, frequency greater than twice the highest frequency of interest should ensure that we can detect and measure that signal. Uh, the same thing happens with digital music. So 20,000 hertz was the highest frequency that we wanted to uh, be able to represent in digital music. The digital sampling rate is typically 44,100 hertz. So if you divide those two, you're going to see that we get a sampling rate of about 2.2 samples per period. So again, Nyquist says any sampling frequency that is greater than twice uh, the highest frequency that we want to find is going to make sure that we can find that signal. We've got to apply the same way of thinking for digitizing our A scans. Um, just like those other examples, our analog ultrasound signals must be digitally reproduced at a rate just greater than the Nyquist limit to make sure that we have detection and uh, some bit of accuracy. Uh, the more samples we get per period, the better our fidelities will be both in terms of time and amplitude. Uh, but unfortunately, no matter how many samples we get, our digital waveform will never be quite as perfect as the original analog because you always lose a little bit of information in between your samples. Um, but we can find sample rates that suit our needs and have adequate accuracy, uh, ensuring signal detection, timing fidelity of our measurements, and amplitude fidelity for the amplitude assessments. Uh, some codes, including ASME, are going to have minimum requirements for certain situations. And those things and others we're going to talk about in future installments. Okay, uh, that'll wrap it up for this episode. Um, the next installment will be a little bit more in-depth, and we're going to cover fidelity and ideal sampling rates. I uh, should get that posted within the next week or so. Um, also, the AST conference in Nashville is coming up in a couple of weeks. I'm looking forward to uh, catching up with old friends and making some new ones. Um, I will be presenting during that, so maybe I'll give you some more details on that as we get a little bit closer. Uh, but either way, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. Uh, so take care and we'll catch up soon.